Praise the Lord and good morning. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Johnston Sakwa, coming to you live on the Scripture Prescription this amazing, wonderful Sunday morning. We want to pray and then we'll hear the Word of God. Father, we indeed want to thank you this morning. We thank you because of the gift of life and the opportunity you have given us yet again to hear your voice this morning. We thank you that this will not be a waste of time and that you will minister to us in a special way. We refuse any confusion and interference in the name of Jesus. And we ask that, Lord, you will speak to us clearly through your word. We bless you and we thank you for this moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Good morning, and I want to welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We will not relent. We continue to share the word of God each and every morning so that the people of God can be blessed. I thank you so much for your dedication, your commitment, and sacrifice to hear the word of God. This morning, I'd like to speak about being exceptional, being exceptional. I want to read the Bible in the book of Proverbs chapter number 22 and verse number 29. Proverbs chapter number 22 and verse number 29. I read from the, uh, the Living Bible. I also read from the New King James Version just to be able to make it clear. Proverbs 22 and verse number 29 from the TLB translation. Bible tells us, Do you know a hard-working man? He shall be successful and stand before kings. Do you know a hardworking man? He shall be successful and stand before kings. Let's read from the New King James Version. Do you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. Other versions say obscure men. I want to submit to you there for this morning that uh, diligence uh, can bring great success in our lives, being diligent in our work. Now, the word diligence is about doing your work to detail with uh, excellence, with commitment, with determination. Praise the name of the Lord. And I speak this because sometimes we have imagined things that are not so. And we must say, uh, put our basis right that we can be able to understand. Now, being diligent is being careful and persistent work or effort. Being careful and persistent work or effort. Careful and persistent work or effort. That is what the simple definition of the word diligence means. Careful and persistent work or effort. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, the reason why many people succeed in this world is because they have been diligent. Praise the name of the Lord. There's a story in the Bible about the woman who kept persisting to a judge to make a decision concerning her case. It is in the Bible. And the judge did not fear God and did not care. But because of the importunity or the persistence or the diligence of this woman, to seek justice from the office of the judge, the judge was forced to make a decision. I want you to understand, child of God, many people rely on grace or favor or what people the world calls as luck. But I want to submit to you this morning that diligence can bring a result of you being ex exceptional. Now, in the business language, we call it competitive age. Now, I want to ask you this morning, do you have a competitive age? Let me just put it this way. Let's say you're running a catering farm uh, where you're serving food to, you know, would be your customers and all that. Now, for you to get value, for you to get business, you've got to be exceptional. You have to be diligent in your work. And the Bible tells us then in the scripture, do you know a hardworking man? He shall be successful and stand before kings. 
I want to submit to you therefore this morning that we must go beyond just our statement of faith that we believe in God. We must be exceptional. We must be diligent. We must do our work dedicatively, consistently, put in effort to ensure that we are exceptional. We are, you know, we have what we call a competitive age. Don't just be a mediocre believer. Don't just be a mediocre Christian. You have to do what you do and do it diligently. There must be a difference between you that believe in God and those who don't believe in God in matters of how we action, how we act, how we do our things. You must think about your life as a person who needs to be exceptional. You are a unique and peculiar people, the Bible tells us, a royal priesthood. Hallelujah. There must be a difference upon the people who believe in God and those who do not. Praise the name of the Lord. And I came to speak to you this morning to let you know that you ought to be exceptional. You must be ex 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 exceptional in your work, what you do in your business, everything you do. You have got to be exceptional. Be a person or woman of diligence. You must be able to carefully and persistently work. Hallelujah. Carefully. Carefully and persistent. Praise the name of the Lord. We are not relenting on our faith in God. We are not relenting on our belief in God. We are carefully and persistently pursuing the call of God in our lives. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's why I came to encourage this morning. I came to speak into your spirit to let you know that we must put upon ourselves an exceptional spirit. Now, I don't have a lot of time to discuss this, but if you were to look at Joseph and look at Daniel, these were exceptional people. In fact, Pharaoh, who did not believe in God, says, where can we find such a man in whom the Spirit of God dwells. How can a man who does not know God recognize the presence of God in another man? Praise the name of the Lord. We must therefore be diligent. Hallelujah. Diligent. You must be exceptional. You know, uh, for those people who have played football, and I've played football myself, you know there are certain people who have got a great touch of the ball. A great touch of the ball. They are exceptional. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't just be a normal football player. No. Be an exceptional football player. Now, when you are in the kingdom, it's incumbent upon ourselves to be exceptional women and men. You have to be exceptional. You have to have a touch that is more than the ordinary touch. You must have an impact that is more than the ordinary impact. Now, grace is available to all. We can, uh, God gives grace as he wills and wisdom as he wills. But grace has been made available to everybody. So you must now move beyond the grace and purpose and make up your mind to be an exceptional believer. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, when you have got exceptional uh, capacity, it means you're doing things better, more than the ordinary. Show me a man that is diligent in his work, and I'll show you a man that will sit with kings. Praise the name of the Lord. One of the reasons why people have not made progress in their lives, in fact, believers, some believers have not made progress, is because they have not been diligent in their work. Diligent in what God has called them to do. Diligent in business. Diligence in sharing the word. Diligent. Diligent. Careful and persistent work or effort. Praise the name of the Lord. Careful and persistent. Don't be careless. Don't be, don't lack persistence. Be careful and persistent in the work or effort you put into place. That is what we call diligence. Now, when you talk about your Christian work, the things you have done or desire to do, the visions you have, the aspiration you have in life, you must sell out yourself to the vision. You must sell out yourself to the dream. In other words, you must believe in the dream. You must believe in the vision. 
And then you will become careful and persistent to achieve what God has called you to do. Now, I'm not, going, I'm not saying that there will not be challenges or there will not be hiccups or valleys. All I'm saying is that when we are diligent, when we are exceptional, then there, there's no way that you will not be able to, to achieve that which you want to do. You must be an exceptional person. Exceptional. Now, I hear many times people say, oh, so-and-so has changed or, you know, so-and-so is not doing the things the way he used to do before. Now, I want to tell you, how would you feel when you, you, you give birth to a child and this child does not grow? They remain at the same place. They, they, they are not moving from, you know, grade one to grade two. They are just stagnating. What would you feel as a parent? But let me tell you, a, a parent is happy when they see progress in their child. They say, this guy does not talk many words these days. This guy is making decisions. This guy wants this and this. He can speak out his mind. He knows what he wants. And this is growth. So when you hear people saying so-and-so has changed, it means you have begun to take certain positions in life. And these positions are making some other people, you know, uncomfortable. It is, it is true. Because you are growing, you are maturing. You no longer perceive things the same way. And it's not possible to be in the same place all the years. As you grow by, you get children, you, you, you're maturing, responsibilities change, your, your, your aspirations change. A lot of things change as you grow up, as, year come, as years come by, then things change. So it is not possible to remain the same. Praise the name of the Lord. There must be an upgrade. Let me, let me say this. Even in terms of relationships, we must consistently upgrade. This is what I want to say. Maybe somebody married a lady who was a house girl, uh, uh, a housewife at that particular time, who was a housewife at the time of marriage. Now, through time, this housewife upgrades and, and, and probably goes to school up to university and gets a job and begins to work. It would be so unfortunate if the husband continues to look at the lady as a housewife, yet the housewife has already upgraded to somebody who is now in a position of employment and probably even supervising people. It is incumbent, therefore, upon the man to upgrade and begin to look at the spouse as a person who is no longer a housewife now, but somebody working. Now, if there is no upgrade, then that is a cause of a problem. I want to speak to you today in the name of Jesus Christ. We must put on ourselves an exceptional spirit. We must embrace diligence. Yes, we are living men under grace. But I want to tell you, only people with a diligent spirit, an exceptional spirit, avail to us all. You are unique. You are peculiar. You have an exceptional power, spirit put in you. Peter tells us that, that you are a holy people, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we have a uniqueness that God has put in our lives. We must work, therefore, with diligence and being exceptional people to bring out the result that God intended for us. That is why we mention Daniel. That's why we mention Joseph. Men that were full of the Spirit of God and they were exceptional. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, exceptional people. Praise the name of the Lord. And so I speak to you right now. I came to encourage you, beloved. I came to speak to you in the name of Jesus to let you know we must put on an exceptional and diligent spirit to be able to arrive at the place that God wants us to be in the name of Jesus Christ. We must constantly and consistently upgrade if you, 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 you continue to behave as a youth and yet you have got children that are now youth in your family, then as a parent, you have failed. You have been overtaken by events. So you cannot continue to behave as a youth when you have got youth in your house. That means a lot of years have passed and then you are brought into this world. You are young people that now are youth. You must upgrade. You must know that you have to behave differently. You have to speak different things. Two years ago, I was uh, taking my teenage boy to school, 
and he he told me that uh, the way I talk to his fellow uh, pupils must be different. I can I must change the way I talk to them because he was telling me I I, I was talking to them you know in a speech that he, he was not comfortable with. And I said, why? He said, no, you must know how to talk to people who are of my age. So he told me, when you go there, this is how you have to talk. Not just talk the way you want to talk. And I understood the young man. I understood him. I understood him. So you must be exceptional. You must have a competitive age. We must, as Christians, as believers, we must come out of mediocrity. We must stop doing mediocre things, speaking in a mediocre way. We must be exceptional and diligent. If you begin something, pursue it to the conclusion. If you start a dream, pursue it to conclusion. Don't change horses midstream. Pursue. Pursue. The Bible tells us in Habakkuk, write your vision on tablets, let them that see it run. Though it tarries, it will come to pass. Your dream, your vision will come to pass. Put on an excellent spirit. Put on a diligent spirit because that is what God desires for us in the name of Jesus Christ. I hope that you're getting what I'm saying. If you have to upgrade, upgrade. When people say somebody has changed, do they they look at themselves? Maybe it is them who have changed. Now, when people change, they probably have seen something they did not see before. A certain truth has been presented to them they did not know before. I came to El Kari this morning. And I thank the Lord so much for your presence this morning. I don't want to say many words this morning. I just want to speak a blessing in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Lots of you online this morning. The good Lord bless you. The good Lord be with you. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you and we bless you this morning. Help us to have an excellence, an exceptional and a diligent spirit upon our lives to be able to realize the dream and the call of God in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. The good Lord bless you. The good Lord be with you. We thank God. People have continued to contribute to us the upgrade of the Zoom application so we can bring in more programs to us. We are left with about just about $40, maybe about 4,500 Kenya shillings and we can move on. We believe by the start of June, we will begin to bring even extra episodes of the things we want to share through this platform for the glory of God. Uh, two days ago, I want to testify. A lady friend of mine called me and you want to talk to me. And as we discuss this matter, she gave her life to Jesus Christ. And we give God all the glory and honor. We pray the Lord will continue to sustain her in the matters of the kingdom. Shalom. This has been your host, Pastor Johnston Sacco, coming to you live on the scripture prescription, your daily morning dose of the word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Shalom. The good Lord be with you and the good Lord bless you. Amen and amen.